Why? Because money talks and bullshit walks. Take a look at the succulent, mouth-watering burger. Y'all see it there? Yeah, they're hungry already. Let me cut it very deftly here. Look at it, how juicy it is. Can you all tell that? Can you see that? Oh my goodness, that looks good. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So we've had a request to respond to an episode on the Dr. Oz show called The Guilt-Free Meat You Should Be Eating. Guilt-Free Meat. This should be interesting. We've edited down the episode. Let's take a look. How much? Who wants to taste this? We don't. Not us. <laughs> it seems almost sinful, doesn't it? So good. You never say that about eating plants, do you? And that tells us everything. This burger... Uh, just, just, just taste it and let it so melt in your mouth. Is this guy a doctor or the host of a cooking show? Delicious. Uh, I love a good job, okay? Yeah. What if I told you that this burger is guilt-free? Guilt-free. Now, this is either a vegan burger or roadkill, because that's the only way you can have guilt-free meat. Guilt-free. No extra time at the gym or making it up by cutting calories elsewhere this afternoon, tomorrow, any other time. Ah, of course, Dr. Oz isn't interested in guilt-free in terms of ethics. He's only talking about guilt-free in terms of calories and weight loss. All right, because you know what? It's made from a healthy meat. And it's a healthy meat, and I know it's healthy meat because of where it comes from. So where does it come from, Dr. Oz? It must come from, like, a unicorn farm. Where because... saturated fat and cholesterol doesn't exist. Right, this is healthy meat that you should be eating, right? But you're not. You should be eating it. Doctor's orders. But apparently vegans shove their diet in your face. So this is interesting. It's quite irresponsible and dangerous and we almost say malpractice to be associating meat with health. Definitely. So what is this wonder meat that Dr. Oz is so excited about? You should be eating, right? But you're not. It's... It's dog. Why not? There's no difference between the corpse of a dog or a cow or a chicken. Meat is meat. It's bison meat. Have you ever heard of bison meat? We have. In fact, we ate bison meat back in 2008. We were traveling in Montana and it was pretty much the very first time that we started to make a connection with who was on our plate. Yeah, it was. We would admire these majestic beasts by day at Yellowstone National Park and then go and eat them in a burger at night. If you want to learn more about that experience, you can watch this video. Because we're living in a time where everyone is looking for healthier proteins, we should be celebrating bison. It's 2017 and we're still talking about protein. Let's see what the science has to say. 6,000 men and women over age 50 from across the U.S. followed for 18 years, and those under age 65 with high protein intakes had a 75% increase in overall mortality and a fourfold increase in the risk of dying from cancer. But not all proteins. These associations were either abolished or attenuated if the proteins were plant-derived, which all makes sense given the higher IGF-1 levels among those eating lots of protein. The sponsoring university sent out a press release with a memorable opening line, that chicken wing you're eating could be as deadly as a cigarette, explaining that eating a diet rich in animal proteins during middle age makes you four times more likely to die from cancer than someone with a low-protein diet, a mortality risk factor comparable to smoking cigarettes. And when they say low-protein diet, what they actually mean is just getting the recommended amount of protein. It wasn't just more deaths from cancer. Middle-aged people who eat lots of protein from animal sources were found to be more susceptible to early death in general. Crucially, the same did not apply to plant proteins like beans, and it wasn't the fat, but the animal protein that appeared to be the culprit. It's the closest tasting meat to our beloved beef, yet it's healthier, and it's raised naturally. Oh my god, so many things wrong with this clip. <laughs> Number one, raised naturally doesn't mean it's natural for us to eat it, because if it was, then it wouldn't be causing the number one disease that kills most humans on the planet, heart disease. Yeah, and healthy, well, we'll get onto that in a minute, yeah. and our beloved beef. Well, animals are not ours. They might be property under the law, but so are human slaves, and we realized that was immoral, so we abolished it. As for beef, that's a euphemism strategically used to disconnect us from the once living, breathing, sentient animal that we're eating. The largest bison rancher in the world is media mogul Ted Turner. He's committed to preserving the American bison, which was nearing extinction just a decade ago. You don't preserve animals by breeding them to ultimately slit their throats and serve their bodies as burgers. 
That's not preservation, that's modern day slavery. So Ted Turner is the billionaire behind the bison boom, and we can only assume he's the one funding this episode on Dr Oz's show, which is just like one big ad for Turner's bison ranch business. Now this is a guy who calls himself an environmentalist <laughs> while being part of the animal agriculture industry. Clearly he hasn't watched Cowspiracy yet. No, and he's created a wonderful, humane illusion of this slaughter industry. You know, there's even a picture of, the, of a rainbow on the website. Well, there ain't no rainbows in a slaughterhouse. So the biggest lie that's being sold here in this advertisement is that bison meat is healthy. And if you tell a lie often enough, people begin to believe it. That's right. Let's hear how many times the word healthy is pushed in this ad. It's made from a healthy meat. And it's a healthy meat, right? This is healthy meat that you should be eating. Looking for healthier proteins, yet it's healthier. Well, it's good and it's good for you. I mean, bison is a great protein. It's richer in omega-3 fatty acids. But it's healthier. It's got to be delicious. And if it happens to be healthy, it's an extra check. Bison, the healthy meat, it's you're not eating. The health benefits. It makes you wonder, is this Dr. Oz or Dr. Spin? Because he's acting like a spin doctor that is manipulating his audience. Beef versus bison. I'll be beef, you're bison, <laughs> all right? Let's, sure. put, let's put the animals up. Yes, let's put the animals up there. Would you like the before or after shots? In my case, a beef burger usually is about 240 calories, right? A bison burger, 179. 25% less calories. It's a big difference. Big yeah. Less calories doesn't equal healthy. I mean, you could eat 100 calories of McDonald's, which is less than what a bison burger is, but that doesn't mean McDonald's is healthy. No, you know? it's what's in those calories. Yes. Where do they come from and what effect do they have on our bodies? Now, if you have to worry about calories to this degree, then you're eating the wrong diet. That's right. Check out the Forks Over Knives website. They have heaps of recipes for healthy plant-based burgers and you'll notice that they don't list the calories because calories from plant foods are completely different in terms of the effect they have on our bodies than animal products. Saturated fat, saturated fat, this is a big deal. You gotta be careful here because with red meat you can have a fair amount. Beef has about six grams. Bison, three and a half grams, almost half. And the same goes for total fat. Having less of a bad thing doesn't make it good. That would be like saying smoking one pack of cigarettes a day is good or healthy compared to smoking two. Or sm uh, snorting one line of cocaine, <laughs> for example, is good compared to snorting two lines. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean, crazy. processed meat is classified as a class one carcinogen. Mm. Red meat is classified as a class two A carcinogen. So does that mean that red meat is all of a sudden healthy because it's less of a carcinogen compared to processed meat? Of course no. not. Let's hear what the science has to say. What are the tolerable upper intake levels for trans fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol? The Institute of Medicine did not set upper limits for trans fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol because any intake level above zero increased bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. Any level of a trans fat intake above zero increased LDL cholesterol concentration, the number one risk factor for our number one killer, heart disease. And same with saturated fat. Any intake level above zero, and similar findings for cholesterol. So intakes of meat, eggs, dairy, and junk food should be as low as possible because there is no tolerable intake. And how does it compare with other sources of protein like chicken or, or salmon? Well, that's a crazy thing. It's not just lower than beef, it's lower in calories and fat than chicken and even salmon. Again, less of a bad thing doesn't make it good. No, but, you know, industries have been using these tactics and spinning these lies for a long time. It reminds me of the famous Philip Morris cigarette ad that tried to downplay the risk by saying, hey, you think secondhand smoke is bad, increasing the risk of lung cancer 19%. Well, hey, Drinking one or two glasses of milk every day may be three times as bad, 62% increased risk of lung cancer. Or doubling the risk frequently cooking with oil, or tripling your risk of heart disease eating non-vegetarian, or multiplying your risk sixfold eating lots of meat and dairy. So they conclude, let's keep some perspective here. The risk of cancer from secondhand smoke may be well below that of other everyday activities, so breathe deep. It's like saying, yeah, don't worry about getting stabbed, because getting shot so much worse. Right? It's like saying, if you don't wear seatbelts, might as well have unprotected sex. If you go bungee jumping, might as well disconnect your smoke alarms at home. Two risks don't make a right. 
Well, when you go to the supermarket to buy beef, there's all these uh, labeling terms, some of which are misleading, some very confusing. Yes, this is something we agree with. There is no such thing as humane meat. Bison, you just look for bison. It's raised the way nature intended. It's America's original red meat. You can raise an animal the way nature intended, but at the end of the day, all these animals that are raised for food are loaded onto trucks and sent to a slaughterhouse to have a bolt gun to the head and a knife to the throat. And of course, industry will show us all kind of propaganda and pretty images. You know, don't forget the rainbow. These are designed to make us feel good and comfortable about our bad habits, but... They are terrified and they don't want to die. So this was a super disappointing episode on The Dr Oz Show because he knows better. He recently said that veganism will be the biggest movement in 2017. So why is he promoting anything less? Why? Because money talks and bullshit walks. There are our thoughts on Dr Oz's advertisement for bison, guys. <laughs> what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you share this around to get the message out there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you ding the bell and tick the box to receive notifications for our upcoming videos. And remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video. Bye guys. Yeah.